Okay, so today we're working on the Plague Doctor Stuffy, which has been a highly requested design in the group, and Kelly made it absolutely amazing. Um, it's not hard at all, but it is different, so we thought a video tutorial would really help you guys out. So it has a cape, which is optional if you don't want it. I'm going to do mine in this uh, sort of shag minky material, and then the main part of the body I'm going to do in this gray fur. Had a really hard time choosing colors and everybody seemed to have a different opinion so hopefully this will turn out cute this is my first run at it so i'm going to start with the cape so you go ahead and load your hoop one for the cape into your machine and you are going to stitch your step one directly onto your stabilizer i'm using a heavy tear weight today so i've stitched step one which is just going to show us where to put our two pieces this hoop is going to use both pieces of our cape fabric and it's going to be assembled together in hoop two. So you want a piece of folded fabric. So you have a hem that is going, when folded up, is going to be big enough for your hoop size. So I'm doing the five by seven size. So I want my folded piece to be at least five by seven and you wanna give yourself a little seam allowance. So I usually give at least two inches. So I want my finished piece or my folded piece of fabric to be seven by nine inches. So that means I'm gonna have a seven inch wide by 18 long. And then when I fold it, it will be seven by nine. So those uh, measurements will be included in the PDF tutorial if you're not uh, great at making those from your hoop size. So you are going to fold your fabric in half with your pretty sides together and you wanna line the fold right up on this bottom line. This is going to be one piece and this is going to be the other. So we wanna just cover that half with a little bit of seam allowance. And then we're gonna go ahead and stitch our step two which will tack down that seam. We wanna make sure that that fold is directly on that line because that bottom fold is going to create your bottom seam along your cape. So we have that left side done and it's stitched right to that fold. We have the fold going all along here, which we're going to leave intact. When we take this off, we're just going to trim excess around here. So you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. We have our fabric when folded, that is about two inches bigger than our hoop size. We are going to line up so it covers that placement on that side and line up the fold of the fabric on that line at the bottom. So that is all that there is to hoop two or hoop one of the cape. I'm going to take this off the hoop. I'm going to trim the excess with about a half inch to quarter inch seam allowance. If you're using something that frays, you may want to zigzag those edges or just make sure you cut a wider seam allowance there. I'll probably notch into that corner there and trim the tips here to go to get a good point. So I've just given those a trim there. I left the bottom hem fold intact and then I'm just going to take it and turn it so that the right sides are out. And that's going to be one part of our cape and the same thing on the other. And that's gonna be the second part of the cape. So I have to load the cape hoop two to assemble this all together. So I've gotten a fresh piece of tear away into my hoop and I've loaded the cape hoop two and I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the first step which is just a placement line to show me where to put my cape pieces. So we have the step one placement placed and I'm going to lay my fabric down so that the straight side where the stitching stops is right over top of that line and you're only adding one piece for now. Uh, the cape has a ribbon to tie around the neck so that's what we're going to add next so step two will be a placement to show us where to put the ribbon i'm using extremely long ribbon because i'm not sure exactly how long i'll need and what i will like so i tend to cut long and then i can always trim it down once i'm finished So 
So I stitched step two, which shows us where to put the ribbon. I have it folded in two, or you can use two pieces of ribbon, but the less cups the better as far as I'm concerned. I just uh, gave a quick little heat seal on the end of these just to make sure they don't fray. And I used some water soluble just so I could see on my fur what I was doing. So I'm just going to place that over top. You can tape it down if you want and just tack it down using the step three. So we've got the ribbon secured there and you can go ahead and remove that water soluble if you like. And we've got our ribbon there. So our next step is just going to be assembly. So we're gonna get the two pieces back or added together to make our cape. So you're going to line up the top and the bottom. So you want your seam at the bottom and your points on this end all lined up. And it's going to stitch around here and also do a satin stitch so, or a zigzag stitch, I guess. And that will secure it where it is because I'm using fur. I'm going to have a layer of water soluble so I can keep my stitches from getting all or my needle to get all caught up in that fur pile. So we've stitched step four, which is the attachment together of the two pieces of our cape. This would be the hood portion and this is sort of the cape flowing part down. Um, there is a zigzag stitch, which is step five. Uh, if you want to trim your material first, you can, or you can just trim after you've done the zigzag or you can admit the zigzag as well if you're using something like this that doesn't fray away then it's not needed. Um, I'm going to match to my fabric color as closely as I can so the zigzag will be hidden. So we've gone ahead and stitched our, that step five which will give us a zigzag finish as well as a final outline there and that's all we have to do for our cape. So you can cut it out and give it a small seam allowance there. So I've trimmed it up there and all I'm going to do is just flip it right side out and then that ribbon is going to be used to tie around the head of the outer there. I'll show them on once we get our stuff done. So I'm going to get another fresh piece of stabilizer and start with hoop one of the actual doll. Okay, so we loaded hoop one, which is going to be our arms, our legs, and we're making the shape of the front, which is a little different than we normally do. Super simple, just different. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch step one on tearaway stabilizer again, and then we will start laying down fabrics. So we have step one stitched on the stabilizer. Step two is just going to tack down our feet and arms. So we're just going to lay fabric over the feet and arms with right sides together. This fabric's hard to tell, but it's more shiny on the other side. And we're just going to go ahead and stitch around those. So we stitched all around the limbs and I just trimmed away any excess that was covering any of that outline stitch. Now this is going to make our front panel that has our 3D nose. So you're gonna want this piece of fabric to be big enough when opened up like this, it's going to fit in your five by seven or whichever hoop size you're using. Now this also is going to have the loss of the nose. So this is going to be stuck up in the air. So it's not gonna to count to our width and it's about two inches long on the five by seven. So I want my finished piece to be big enough for my five by seven. I would cut that seven by nine. So I made it nine inches tall and then I cut it extra wide to account for that nose. So I've got it about 10-ish inches wide and I'll break down all those sizes and get them included in the PDF tutorial as well. Um, this is probably a little more than we need but I'd always rather have too much than not enough. So we're going to place this so that our seam, you could use two pieces of fabric too, but so one edge of our fold is right against that nose with a little bit of seam allowance and we're just going to stitch around there. I've got my right sides together. We've got our arms and our legs cut out. The arms are at an angle and a little bit skinnier than the legs. Uh, you can just simply turn them if you find that okay. I like to use a dowel to poke limbs out. Uh, you can also, limbs are so furry, it's hard to see. Add a little pocket opposite the hole if you find it even hard to get it initially flipped over. And then just use that to guide your pieces 
right sided. And we got our two legs and our two arms turned right sided and ready to add to our hoop tube body. So I've gone ahead and unhooped that piece and just trimmed around that stitch line. I also cut into those curves just to release the nose. And when you just flip it so right sides are out, you have the nose and that's going to be the piece that you use to stitch on for your hoop two. Step one is going to be our placement to show us to center. This piece of fabric should still measure wide enough for your hoop size, so mine's about six and a half inches. Uh, if I was doing it again, especially for the first time, I'd probably cut it even a little wider just to give myself a little more wiggle room, but we'll make it work. Okay, so it's just stitched center line so we can line up our seam along the middle with that line and it's going to stitch the outline in two separate steps. So it's going to stitch the left side first. So that way when we place our fabric on, you can put, place your nose to the right side and it will stitch that left side down for you. And then it's going to stop so you can flip the nose the other way and stitch the other side so you don't catch that nose in your stitching. And I'm using fur so I'm gonna use some water soluble to help keep that fur under control. So you stitch step two, which just was one half. I'm just gonna see underneath my water soluble and just poke my nose over the other way and then continue stitching around with step three. So the full stuffy is tacked down here and we're gonna go ahead and stitch our placement for our belly applique. So you stitch the placement for the belly. I'm going to match to my cake fabric and lots and lots of water soluble when using furs. So I'll tack that down. I've got that tacked down and now I'm going to trim as closely as I can. My favorite are double angle applique scissors. When I'm using fur, I like to pull the fabric up at a 90 degree angle and I find that cuts more of the pile. And then you get a cleaner cut when trying to trim minky. So I've trimmed that as closely as I can and I'm going to use another piece of water soluble to keep all those little bits in check and do the satin stitching around the belly which is step six. So we've got the satin stitch done here. Normally we would do all appliques together, but because we're navigating around this nose, it's going to do the full eye on the right, and then we're gonna be able to flip the nose over and do the full eye on the left to make sure that you don't have to worry about it crossing back and forth over that nose many, many times. So we're going to stitch the placement for that right eye. So we have the placement. I'm going to make a green sparkly eye. Um, this is a stretch performance knit. You could use a embroidered quality vinyl or just your choice of fabric. So I'm just going to lay that down. This is super, super stretchy. So I use a uh, just scrap of fusible on the back to control the stretch. So we're just gonna tack that down. So we have that tacked down and I'm just going to trim around that applique fabric as closely as I can. Got that trimmed up, going to do the satin stitch around the eye as well as the white speckle. So we've completed that right eye and now we're going to have to open up for a stabilizer here. Just going to pull away from the side. Open on that side, so just gonna get it open and off. And scooch my finger in there. And flap that nose so it's on the other side. And I'm just gonna repeat all of those steps that we did for the right eye for the left eye. So we've got our eyes all finished up. Our next step is going to be to add the placements for our arms and legs so we know where to place them. That is step 16. So we've got our four lines to show our pieces. So I 
just lay them out as I want them to make sure that they all look right. The legs are just a little bit bigger and they have a flat line across the top where the arms have an angle. And then you're going to flip them on a mirror into your hoop for each one. So I just like to do it once at a time so I just set those aside for now and I'm just going to stitch that down then I'll proceed to all of these and finish them up so that they're all tacked in place. So I got those all tacked down. I try to make sure that my legs are about the same length and my arms are sitting in about the same position there. So we just want to make sure those are all inside as well as our nose and none of them are flapped out out of the outline and we're going to go ahead and stitch our final step. We're just going to place our backing on right sides together and stitch around to finish up our stuffy. So you have the outline stitched out. The last step is a stop star and you don't want to stitch that out. This just prevents your machine from recentering. Not a big deal if you're using a multi but if you use a single needle that can sometimes rip your whole project out of the hoop and tear your fabric or catch on things so that's just a safety step to keep it right where you want it after. So we're all done. I'm going to go cut a seam allowance in here. I will make sure to notch in this neck hole to really release that neck so we get a nice turn there as well. So we've gone ahead and cut out my stuffy and I've notched in. Careful not to cut the outline stitches but that will just release your neck. You also, I'm not overly fussy about taking every last little bit of stabilizer off, but you can if you want, but you really, you need to make sure that you remove any stabilizer in the middle here so you're able to stuff your nose without your stabilizer getting in the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that right side in, out, sorry. So you've got him turned right side out. I am doing open limbs, so I'm just going to stuff the limbs and the body. I use hemostats or tweezers to shove stuffing in my open limbs so the holes can be small. And we'll show him to you finish once we get him stepped up. So we have him all finished up there and this is his cute little 3D nose and he looks sweet all by himself and we can also add his cape. So I'll get that tied on and I'll show you how that looks. So I just trimmed up his ribbons there to the desired length. And we have this cute little cape. And there's so many color options that you can do. Just amazing. Really cool and different, but super easy. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. And you can let us know if you have any requests for future video tutorials. Happy stitching, guys!